James here from GoodGuitarist.com and in today's lesson I want to teach you the grandfather of all scales on guitar, the minor pentatonic scale. This shape, not only is it the most used and most useful thing on guitar, not only does it feel super comfortable under your fingers as a guitar player, you know, making it great for learning and mastering all those embellishments and techniques like hammer-ons and pull-offs, but it's also the skeleton or foundation for all the other minor scales on guitar. And it can also be used for major scales too, just by shifting it over by three frets. You know, this is possibly the most useful lead element on guitar. It's practically made for it. And in today's lesson, we're gonna learn the shape itself. We're gonna learn how to place it in different spots on the fretboard, depending on the key that we're playing in. So for example, if we're playing a blues in A, we'll know to play it at the fifth fret. And we're also gonna learn a little trick that lets you shift it up and down to play it as a minor pentatonic scale or as a major pentatonic scale. If along the way you find that you need any extra help or would like some further guidance, I have a worksheet on my Patreon page that has everything in this lesson written out for you. You can do all the exercises and everything that we're going to cover at your own pace. I also have a free lead guitar ebook. It's completely free for all my subscribers and it has all the basics of lead guitar in there. So please check that out. I'll put a link in the corner. Otherwise, we're going to get started with the lesson. First, the scale itself. We'll start on the fifth fret of the thickest string and we're going to put our index finger there. And for this entire scale, our index will play the fifth fret, our ring finger is going to play anything on the seventh fret, and our pinky is going to play anything on the eighth fret. That means we're playing in position. And if you look at it, we're kind of just laying out our fingers where they want to be. You know, each finger gets a fret. Five, seven, and eight. On the thickest string, we go index, pinky. So that's five, eight. Then the next three strings are all the same. They're all five, seven, or index, ring. So index, ring, for three strings in a row. Let's start from the beginning. We're gonna go index, pinky, and this might be tough to reach with your pinky, so be sure to get your knuckles forward, suck your elbow in, you know, get the guitar aiming upright a little bit. That's all gonna help. And honestly, if this whole thing is new to you, I wouldn't expect you to be able to just get that part right away. I'm more or less just showing you the notes at this point. We're gonna work on how to actually learn it and incorporate it into your muscle memory in a bit, so bear with me. We'll start from the beginning. Our index on the fifth fret, index, pinky, and then index ring for three strings in a row. And finally, we're at the top two strings, and those are both index pinky, or five eight. Now, when it comes to memorizing the scale, you can just play it up and down a whole bunch like this. I like to break it down into little bits and just do two or three strings of it at a time. That way, you're not always starting the scale at the very bottom. You know, that's another pitfall I notice with students is they learn the scale up and down like I just showed you. And then when they're trying to jam, they just play their scale up and down because that's what they've built into their muscle memory. You know, they always start at the very bottom or they start at the very top because that's the way they practice it. So I like to practice it from the middle, from the inside, the outside, you know, every way that we can so that we can use it the any way we need to. And I'm in the process of making a lead guitar course. It might even be out by now. And that's the sort of thing we do. You know, we go through this and everything else incredibly thoroughly, leaving no stone unturned, you know, breaking it down, kind of like if you were to actually take lessons with somebody, you know, we work through it at every angle. You can check that out down below. You'll either be able to sign up and get a pre-sale sort of thing, or it could already be out by now, you know, depending on when you're watching this tutorial. Anyways, 
The thing that I like to do with this scale, especially if you're just getting started with it, is to focus on the index ring part where we were on the A, D, and G string, just going index ring. You know, it's the same thing on each string and it kind of makes like a little box. I don't know if you can see right there. And that feels really comfortable. You know, it's using some really prominent fingers and I would just practice that little bit on its own, on the A string, 5-7, D string, 5-7, and the G string, 5-7. I would just load up a backing track and just play anything. You know, it doesn't matter. The whole point is to just get used to it. You know, you can play it up and down, play one note, do whatever you want, kind of like this. After you experiment or just play around with those notes, I would do the exact same thing with the top three strings. So on the thinnest string, index pinky, and then same thing on the B string, and then index ring on the G string. That way you get used to going between those two different fingerings. I'll put a link to a backing track down below that you can use to practice the scale in those two different ways. You know, doing the three by three box and then the top three strings and just playing around with it any way you want, just exploring those notes. And now I wanna point out the way that we're playing this with our index finger at the fifth fret, that makes this the A minor pentatonic scale. And that's because our first finger lines up with the note A on the thickest string. So we have A at the fifth fret. And by that logic, if we move this shape around, whatever note our index finger lines up with, that's gonna be the key that we're in with this scale. So if we shifted it over to the third fret and my index finger lines up with the note G on the thickest string, I would now be playing G minor pentatonic. You know, so I want to keep the space between my fingers the same. My index gets the third fret. My middle isn't being used, but it would get the fourth. Ring finger on the fifth, and then pinky on the sixth fret. And I do the same thing. Index, pinky, index, ring. And because my index lines up with G on the thickest string, I'm now playing G minor pentatonic. Let's do one more example. I'm going to move my index finger up to the seventh fret, and that is the note B, right there, the seventh fret of the thickest string. And if I play my pentatonic scale there, I get B minor pentatonic. And here's a chart with all the root notes on the thickest strings. So you can easily put this scale into any key just by moving it around. I've also included this in the printable worksheet on my Patreon page if you're interested in checking that out. And with that, you could just look up backing tracks like blues in G. And all you need to do is check the chart, see that G is the third fret, and that's where your first finger goes. And then you can jam the minor pentatonic scale on the blues in G. Now, another thing that you're gonna discover, especially if you try to play something aside from the blues, is that when your index finger lines up with the root, that gives you the minor pentatonic scale. And the cool thing with the blues is whether you're playing a major blues, or a minor blues, the minor pentatonic scale always sounds good. Say you want to play along with a song that isn't the blues. Maybe you want to jam on In My Life by the Beatles, which is in the key of A major. Well, in that case, if you put your index at the fifth fret, as you know, the way that I've shown you, that gives you A minor pentatonic, and that's not going to work on a song that's in the key of A major. 
What will work, instead of lining up your index finger with that root, you're going to shift it down three frets, one, two, three, so that your pinky is lining up with that root. So now your pinky is on the note A, and you're still going to play the scale the same way, but your starting note is your pinky. So my index finger is, you know, it's lining up with the second fret, and if you use that chart, you'd see that that makes F sharp minor. So technically we're playing F sharp minor pentatonic, but we're also playing A major pentatonic. And this works because F sharp minor and A major share the exact same notes. F sharp minor is the relative minor of A major and vice versa. For now though, all we need to know is you put your index finger on whatever key the song says it's on. If that sounds bad, you just shift it down three frets and you know your pinky will be on that note instead. And that gives us access to the major pentatonic notes. And with that, you could have a career in music, you know, just following the roots on the thickest string, knowing to shift over between the major and minor pentatonics. And this is a really good point to leave on. You know, we learned three huge concepts in this lesson. We learned the most important, most useful scale on guitar and a good way to start memorizing and learning it. We learned how to navigate using the thickest string and play this thing in any key. And then we learned how to differentiate between minor and major songs simply by starting the scale with our index on the root or with our pinky on the root. And those three things are going to take you far. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to check out that worksheet on my Patreon page if you'd like some written materials to work with at your own pace and have access to all the materials that I used to make this lesson. I also have a lead guitar ebook that's 100% free for all my subscribers. It goes over all the fundamentals of lead guitar. There's a link for that in the corner. And my beginner to intermediate lead course, which is coming out soon. There's more information on all that down below. So have a fun time practicing and I'll see you soon.